So if I look at my sketch and I see all my joints, I want to make sure that everything is accounted for, right? So I've got my head, I've got my spine, I've got my collarbone pretty clearly shown here and the rib cage pretty, pretty clearly defined between these different references. I've got my knee joints here and here, and I've got my front feet here and here. I've got my pelvis. I've got the separation uh, between the back legs and the pelvis. I've got my knee joints. It's kind of a backwards bending knee, right? And then I've got most of the that toe stretch here, and I don't have feet. So this is not a complete creature because without the grass covering the feet, I don't have feet, right? And I need this to be a, a fully free-floating full creature. So what do I do? I go to my references and I see if I have any feet. And I do. And maybe they're good feet. Maybe I need to find new feet reference. Maybe I need to change gears. But this is what I have. <laughs> and it can kind of work. But I might be inspired to go to Pixabay or even Google Images and look for some other type of feet, right? So I'll log in quick. Let me think. What about like for a mole? I want something webbed. But I want them more substantial than like the duck. And platypus just didn't have a lot of entries. Gosh, the stuff you find. Yikes. It's creepy. Yeah, it's hard to find feet. So I'm going to try Google Images. I'm not feeling particularly creative right now. I just want to find feet. So let's see. Let's see if Google has platypus. I'm not too worried about infringing on anyone's copyright because these are just going to be like the feet of a full creature. So I'm not going to be relying very heavily on this at all. And then I want to go to tools and make my size large. So it's at least a thousand pixels. And there's some good pictures of feet, but they don't look all that structural. I need like weight bearing. So maybe platypus, that's closer. Maybe they're not the best option. So I might just go to interesting animal feet. And then I see ostrich, the blue-footed booby, Komodo dragon feet. You know, so you might get some different ideas, you know, allow accident and outs outside incidents to affect your process. So don't be too rigid in, in your options necessarily. But I need feet. So let's go with ah, hippo. But this is the problem with Google Images. I need to check the image quality. So open image and new tab. And that image is just not big enough. It's only 275, even though it says it's huge. Because it is here, but it's not here. Now, if I'm being really persistent, I could try something. This is where you would save the entire website to your desktop as a complete web page folder. So here it is. It's saving. Because I know they have the high-res image in there. And then I look at the files. And then I look at their JPEGs, and these should be high resolution. 
So there is no web security. Everything can be taken. Right? And because I did a lot of work to use it, I'm going to go ahead and use it. All right. So now, changing gears a little bit on the feet, I go back to my photo P. It's been saved. And I'm going to bring in that new reference into my feet folder. And it reminds me of a joke, because a rhino is not that different than a hippopotamus, but they are different, right? There's a joke of, I came across a mythological beast. It had, had the head of a lion and the body of a different lion. Oh, guys, stop. Stop the laughter. All right. So, to grab it, I get to pick the feet. And I can choose whether they're front or back, whatever the best reference is. So I'm going to grab this one first with a lot of overlap. I love that joke. The head of a lion and the body of a different lion. It's hilarious. Yeah, okay. The pity, the pity. And then I'm going to take that one foot and I'm going to size it, place it. The color does not match, but with transform, I can make it fit right in. So this gets to another aspect of creative professionalism, and it's coming to what's called a, a level of finish. Because even though no one's really going to be paying attention to, you hope, the back feet, you want to bring everything up to the same kind of level of professional finish. Otherwise, the weakest link in your project is what can sink the whole ship. All right, so that one's, that works. It will get there when I color correct it. Okay, what about... The other one, there isn't one perfect foot, but this one is the one that has the, the clearest definition. Even though we have blurry grass in front of it, I'll show you how we can use something called dodge and burn to fix that and clarify. And it is the back foot, so if I can get away with something a little blurry and lower quality then the back feet are the place to do it. It's always good to take it up to a joint so you can overlap it. And I'm going to do edit, free transform. Rotate it, scale it. It's like putting Ugg boots on a buffalo. And remember, you've got all these tools. I've got distort, so I can kind of get it at the right angle. Use your sketch or use your, your base reference. It's the skeleton and the proportions that matter more than anything else. Okay, so something like that. All right, now, sure enough, I've got a full creature, and I see that I need one additional reference to make my life a lot easier. And that's for a transition at the base of the neck with the chest. And so for this, I'm going to go back to Pixabay after I save. And I'm going to look for, I think a polar bear would be interesting. Because they have that, that nice, white, fluffy coat. But you know what has even fluffier? I don't need to keep to any kind of logic here. I'm already using like reptilian scales and beetle carapace shell and buffalo hide and rhino skin. So I can go to feathers. I can even go to the plant world. 
I can use a, a head of broccoli, you know, if I wanted to. So let's see. I'm going to look for a ruffled bird. Ooh. Yeah, the vulture is cool. It's very bright, like bright white. There's this ostrich, which is beautiful. There's flamingo, which is a little flamboyant. It's just kind of, what are you going for? There's this cute little minor bird that's fluffing itself up. So I love Pixabay. If you know what you're going to use it for, you get such high quality images. Yeah, that could work. Yeah, this image is what I, I hope to look like at 70. That's the vibe I want to give. So now, obviously I'm, I'm beyond five here, and that often happens. But you bring something in, and these are like the in-betweens we need. So where do I put it? I'm going to put it between the head and the body. There we go. I'm going to rough cut it. Actually, might even want to keep some of this. Keep that rough going up. Rough cut it with enough overlap. Command J, get rid of the smart object. Bring it in and underneath. Ah. Covers up that phantom head. That Photoshop disaster. <laughs> Where'd it go? It went in the head, I think. Okay, I'm going to save. And then I can use auto select layer to find the layer and label it. So I'll call this chin curtain, which is the name of a civil war type of facial hair. Okay, now I'm going to use that soft edged eraser, right, at 100%. I'm just going to use it to get rid of the hard edge. Especially on the internal sides. Like here. And that will automatically start to blend it a little bit, even without any color correction. I've got a little piece of grass I'll need to fix. And I'll be able to teach you how to fix all of this next class. Then there's the, the rhino head in the background there. I'm almost using none of it. It's kind of funny, but it really helped me to put everything together, right? To line up where the chin was so that it works with the spine. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to get rid of that hard edge. I need to unlock it. Just get rid of the hard edge. And then there's this reference out here. See what layer that's from. So that can be cut out. So before I do kind of the finishing, I want to color correct all of these. So I'm going to remind you in the last uh, few seconds here that before we do really really fine transitions beyond just getting rid of the hard edges we're going to want to do adjustments those direct adjustments and the direct adjustments we use are levels then color balance and then if needed hue saturation and that's going to make everything blend together even before i have to do some some fine refinements so if I start it with the rhino's head, I know that that's going to change with levels a lot. You know, just making it more contrasted is going to help a lot. 